Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. the symbol crash but I, we should add like an explosion or something and, <laughs> and fireworks on the screen and something really epic <laughs> oh my goodness so much dancing yeah man. holy cow <laughs> I think I heard a crack in lower back this morning that's not a good sign <laughs> <laughs> Is that because your mother stepped on a crack? <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> uh, she skipped over it. Uh, that's why I only very slightly felt it until that once. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, it's um, it's a hazard. It's a hazard for all of us. It is. Hey, welcome to Idiotic, everybody. It's Wednesday morning. Yep. Thanks shout out join. to everybody. Yeah, shout out to everybody sharing the weather forecasts, the local weather in your region. It's bloody cold i believe is the phrase uh here in ottawa mm. oh anyway it's winter what, what what should we what would we expect otherwise but anyway yeah yeah 80 feet of snow and yeah you know, everything else finally you get. yep 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 very good <laughs> it's the thing you know if if we if we didn't have the weather to complain about what else would we do so i have no idea but hey, we've got a great guest with us we today. Do I'm super psyched to have him with us. <laughs> Who do we have with us, Chris? Folks, we have Lee Lefevre with us. Um, Lee, it's your first time with us. So uh, take a minute, introduce yourself to our folks in case they don't, um, they've don't, they never met you before, either virtually or in real life or all, any of those other places. Certainly. Thanks so much for uh, the introduction, guys. Uh, it's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Lee Lefevre, and I am uh, known for common craft videos. Um, and so I will talk a little bit about what that means. Um, so <laughs> Common Craft is uh, a two-person company. It's my wife, Sachi, and I. And in 2003 or so, we I started getting really excited about what is now social media. And a few years later, YouTube came along and we had the idea of making videos that explain social media so people could understand things like RSS and wikis and blogs and social networking and all those kinds of mm. subjects. And to do that, we used a format with a whiteboard and paper cutouts that we used stop motion to, to animate about a three minute video. And those videos, um, I should back up and say also that we, this was just a, a side project for us. We're not educators, we're not professionally trained. It was just something that we did because we thought it needed to be done and that we thought some people might like it. And um, those videos are now known as the original explainer videos of the YouTube era. And that kicked off a whole uh, life-changing sequence of events for us. <laughs> we suddenly became video producers, <laughs> like despite having zero experience in the industry or the practice, we became known as video producers in Common Craft, uh, became known as a video creation company. And we've basically been doing that since then. Uh, we've taken it in a lot of different directions. Uh, we still produce uh, videos that are a part of our video library, which is a part of our business as people become members of Common Craft to use our videos. Uh, but along the way, people often asked, you know, how can I make videos like yours? And that became a big part of what we do as well. Um, I wrote a book called The Art of Explanation uh, that came out in 2012, which took the lessons we learned from making explainer videos and applied it to, to any situation. Uh, we created the Explainer Academy, which is like courses for uh, making videos like ours using simple and affordable tools. And uh, I think that overall these days we're really focused on uh, you know, helping people see opportunities uh, to use media uh, maybe in a way that they didn't expect or to, to use common tools like like PowerPoint um, to make media. Um, and so that's part of what we'll talk about today. But I, also sure. a little bit of biography. I live in um, uh, a place called Orcas Island off the coast of, of Washington State. And as I mentioned in the chat, it's currently dark here. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, it's great to be with you guys this morning. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's the curse of, of the modern world is that there, it's darkness somewhere. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but, for, but for those of vote, those who, who choose to drink something other than coffee, it's also five o'clock somewhere. So, you know, <laughs> pros and cons, I guess. That's uh, right. That's to right. This global world that we that we live in. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you talked about the fact that you folks weren't really, you know, you, this wasn't an area of expertise. You just kind of, you know, jumped in. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about how you how you did that jump in. Like, you know, where did you what did you do first to figure out how to even do this kind of a thing since it wasn't your ex area of expertise? Yeah. Um, you know, we had uh, prior to making the videos in 2007, we uh, did some travel and, and, and got a video camera and started making just simple videos as we traveled and putting them on YouTube. Uh, this was the very early version of YouTube. And so I loved making the videos. I was using something like Windows Movie Maker to edit the videos. And I was like, wow, video editing is actually easier than I thought it was <laughs> um, even then. Uh, and so when we came home, um, you know, this was 2006, like late 2006, early 2007. And social media was really just about to blow up. YouTube was getting more and more popular. And I started to have a plan where I was going to explain RSS, you know, really simple syndication, which helps sort of, sort of the plumb, part of the plumbing of the internet that moves mm -hmm. content around now. Um, and I started, I put a whiteboard on the wall and got markers and set a camera on a tripod and tried to write on the whiteboard and look at the camera at the same time. <laughs> and uh, that was really hard. Like I never, I'd never done anything like that before and quickly discovered that I needed a lot more practice if I was going to make that work. I had never been a lecturer Mm -hmm. a, uh, and I got frustrated and, and my, my wife, Sachi, who was always the problem solver, um, had this idea. She's like, why don't we just take you out of the picture? Let's, let's not worry about you. Let's put the whiteboard on the ground and point the camera down onto the ground and then just fill the frame with the whiteboard. And then we can put things in the, in the frame. We can move pieces of paper around and markers. And that was like, wow, what an idea. That's like, <laughs> how to do that. That's a lot easier. Um, and so uh, we started experimenting and within a few weeks, we, uh, we created our first video. Um, and, uh, you know, looking back, it makes me cringe a little bit because it was such an early version of what we do. But we discovered early on that what really mattered was um, the explanation itself, like the right, mm -hmm. like the ideas that we're communicating and not so much the visuals. Um, and so things just went from there, really. Very, very cool. It's uh, it's actually kind of it's kind of awesome that the um, the impracticality of what you thought was the, the the way to do it, and it ends up leading to the innovation and the change, the shift, etc. That's very cool. Yeah. And you yeah, I give Sachi book. credit for the idea. You What's do that? have a you do have a book uh, teaching folks how to do what you guys did, right? Um, yeah. So actually, yeah, I'm sure I've got one right here. Um, <laughs> I, I've got one. On you know, excuse me. I, I, I happen to have one right here. <laughs> so the art of explanation is uh, is the book. Um, so yeah, that um, it, it really is built on the lessons we learned about explanation. But it's not necessarily. It's not really at all about making videos. It's um, it's really about the skill of explanation right. applied mm -hmm. to ideas, products, services, anything you want. Um, it's been translated into eight languages or so, and I'm really proud of it. It continues, you know, gosh, over 10 years later um, to be useful to people. And I'm, I'm honored by that. Yeah, so but today we wanted to talk about um, readable videos. And, I, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I was excited to bring you back on just because I always love chatting with you, Lee. So it, it's, it's always fun to have you on my podcasts and whatnot. But um, I saw that and I thought, oh, great, a cool new topic, something that he's thinking about, talking about going after that I thought might be good for uh, for our folks. And so a couple of folks from our industry also commented on it. I think that's why it landed up in, at the top of one of my feeds. And so I thought, awesome. well, heck, we better have Leon to talk about this a little bit and, and get yeah. a little clarity around it. So for sure. So sure. what's up with that? <laughs> that reminds me of Saturday Night Live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, a similar kind of evolution where it wasn't that we had this big brainstorming session, one huge, huge idea, it really kind of evolved where um, I mentioned before that we used a whiteboard and paper cutouts and stop motion animation to make Common Craft videos. Yeah. And while it, it sort of imbues the videos with a certain charm and like that is what people know of Common Craft, they're really hard to make. <laughs> like they take a long time. And after doing it for, you know, since 2007, I started thinking, well, if it's really the explanation that matters, 
the, the writing, then maybe I can experiment with other, other formats. And the thing about stop motion animation and, and the former version of Common Craft videos is the, the animations are very simple. It's just something moving into the scene, something moving out, something happening, something whatever. And I thought I can do that with PowerPoint. Like PowerPoint animations work just fine for that, um, for the simple versions that we do with a white background. And so I started thinking like, well, let me try to recreate a Common Craft video that was formerly stop motion and do it in PowerPoint. And I was like, wow, this actually works really well and is super efficient. And um, so even today, we, the Common Craft videos that we publish today are made in that way. They have a voiceover and all that comes with the normal video. But this idea of taking a video, making a video inside PowerPoint um, really thought, made me think like, okay, this is the sort of democratization that I really would, would love to see is when people can use a tool they already have and already know to create media. And um, so that was the, the kind of start of the idea. But I've always felt that one of the biggest barriers in making videos is the voiceover. And that's especially true if you have animation that is disconnected from the audio, because then you have to edit the voiceover to match what's happening in the, in the, in the frames or in the scenes. And, and that's a skill that you have to develop over time. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, it can be discouraging. There's lots of equipment like microphones and editors and all these things. And I, I thought like, what if video, people can make videos and just not have a voiceover? Like that was just the thing. And instead have things like talk bubbles or symbols and on, almost like subtitle kind of things on the screen that uh, relate the idea in a, in a, a way that is consumable. And so uh, I started working on that idea. And uh, I'll, I'll say one more thing about, about video with voiceovers yeah. is that um, they're, they require some kind of audio to participate. Like, uh, you know, you need speakers yeah. or headphones or earbuds to, to hear what's going on. Right. And um, I thought, wow, well, a readable video doesn't need any of that either. You could watch a video uh, in, in a crowded room or whatever you wanted to do. Um, and so all these things kind of started to get into my head and I started experimenting and also thought about accessibility, which I'm sure some people are, are thinking about in this regard. So I do want to say something quick there that, yeah. um, uh, you know, obviously <clears throat> subtitles work for people with hearing impairments. Subtitles are really important. So the, the videos I do think work for the hearing impaired quite well. The visually impaired, um, it's sort of an inherent part of readable videos that they're not accessible inherently. Uh, for the for the visually impaired, um, so I always when people ask about that, I say there's no rules about readable videos. If your audience, if you would like to add a voiceover, please do. I want <laughs> yeah. you to to take this idea in any direction that you want, and please do uh, know that that matters. Um, so I don't want to I don't want this to sound like that I'm not aware that that's a <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. is something that's important to keep in mind. However, I think that it's just readable videos. That's just an inherent part of it um, in this style. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we can just, uh, I'll give you guys a chance to ask questions from here. Yeah, well, so Cor Cornell has a really <laughs> awesome comment uh, about this in the chat. Sounds very good to those of us who live, who have a voice for silent film. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, true. Truthfully, I mean, like in our, in our own e-learning space, so much of, um, you know, an awful lot of the content that gets created as e-learning courses, et cetera, does have narration, et cetera. And um, you know, it does a lot of challenges. People often end up having to contract that out because nobody's mm -hmm. got the equipment. Nobody's, and, and nobody really thinks they've actually got, very few people think they've actually got a voice that someone else wants to listen to, you know, even if you're trying <laughs> to do, do a DIY version of it, uh, you know, so, yeah. so, um, and, and as you say as well, the, um, I mean, you know, switching out of the mode of then having to be able to deal with video um, and synchronization, et cetera, which is not a skill set that everybody, you know, has, but being using a tool as simple or as ubiquitous, I guess, I guess as, as PowerPoint is, is awesome and often an awesome sort of um, way to th start thinking about that. Um, a few years ago, David Byrne from Talking Heads was doing a, I'm going to call it a lecture series, um, uh, but it was all based in in working with PowerPoint. And I haven't yet found the, the link for that, but it, this mm. is one of the things that prompted me. Um, and also around the same time, I remember seeing um, people who were doing anime in PowerPoint mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. So, you know, there's, there's, it's just tremendously powerful. And, but most of us think of it as bullet points and, and, and yeah. stock art, you know. 
Yeah, I think that's uh, that is certainly. I, I think I thought that too until I started messing around with it, and then now I'm I'm like an evangelist. <laughs> Which, who, who's an evangelist for PowerPoint? I mean, I guess there's some people out there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I do think it's powerful. And I should say too, uh, Keynote and Apple works in a very similar way, and a lot of the stuff that we do also works in Google Slides. Um, it's not specific to PowerPoint, right. but one of the things that's neat about both PowerPoint and Keynote is that you can record your screen from inside PowerPoint. So you can mm -hmm. record a presentation. So you can actually create a readable video uh, right inside PowerPoint. Um, I personally like to use screencasting software where I record my screen and that way I can edit it and, and improve it. Um, but one of the things that I think is kind of magical about uh, the readable videos is if you set up every slide and get your animations just right, it's zero editing. Like you mm -hmm. hit record, go through the slides, it spits out a video and that video is done. Like there is no post-production. There obviously can be, but um, that, that's part of the thing is I, I think of readable videos as being um, a utility. Like this is these videos are not going to win design awards. You're not going to explain quantum physics. You know, well. it's not great for interviews. It's <laughs> like a utility where either, I've got a problem. People are confused by this form. So I'm gonna use a picture of this form with arrows and talk bubbles and walk people through each section of the form. And um, I think there's a place for those kinds of videos that doesn't have to involve voiceovers. It can be an on-screen mm -hmm. experience that's like an intake form, or maybe you're a teacher and you're showing a timeline or a flow chart, or you know, there's lots of, lots of things there that really simplify and make these videos very, um, uh, very, very kind of like minimalist in their presentation. And one of the things that I think is really neat too is uh, when the, those video files that have, you know, just very simple graphics uh, are very small in file size. And that means you can also make them mm. very easily into animated GIFs oh, that yeah. play automatically that you can send an email or whatever it is. Um, and I do that with a, a product on Apple called GIF, GIF Brewery mm. that makes that simple. Um, so yeah, I just think that it's a, a very lightweight way to make videos. So just to be clear for the, everybody in the chat, we're not talking about uh, very, very, like as in a readable video, we're not talking about like utilizing like automated transcription services that put the text on the screen while you're talking or anything like that. What you're talking yep. about is, is designing uh, your visual graphics with the text on the screen as visual elements just like the arrows and the process and all that kind of stuff right? that's right yeah that's right um so one of the inspiration there's a, a few inspirations that i've had for this um one is just subtitles like i uh my wife my wife and i watch a lot of british tv and uh sometimes you just can't understand, <laughs> understand it very well <laughs> like a show like peaky blinders is one it's like a you know uh, Birmingham, Birmingham accent. And, um, I, I've just come to read subtitles a lot, um, on a lot of shows, even, even in, in American English. Um, yeah. also, uh, if any of you have played the, the game Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch, it's like every interaction you have with someone is words showing up on a screen because it's, it might even be translated from Japanese or something, but basically you're reading the story of what to do next. Um, a third example is karaoke where when you're, uh, you're singing a song with words on the screen, the words roll out in the order you're supposed to sing them. And we're all kind of living in a world where this is a part of what we're doing, but it's not really applied to an intake form or a timeline <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think there's something there. And the thing that I've tried to develop with this idea is not just being able to do it, but do it in a polished way that's engaging. Because I think if you yeah. just throw a paragraph onto a slide, it's not really going to, I mean, people yeah. might read it, but it's not going to be that engaging. So I've worked with animations to do the kind of karaoke thing where they're the work you kind of are following the words across the screen, hopefully at, at the right speed <laughs> um, that kind of guides yeah. people through. So there's, I think there's a lot of little tips and tricks for, mm -hmm. for making the videos less, less boring in terms of just a block of text. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that, um, when when we start talking about text on screen and other you know visual elements, um, you, you know humans we have we have two eyes, but they both point 
in the same direction. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're using things like just even timing to be able to give people the chance to absorb both the reading mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, what else they're supposed to be looking at. Um, how, how do you approach the, the, you know, the idea though, that people read at different speeds? Like how do you, what, what's your sense of how long to leave the text on it? What, what's your kind yeah. of, is it just a by feel or is it a, I mean, it's a video, people can pause it if they need to, you know, that, that's, you know, there's, there's tools for that, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, one of the, the things that I learned about in the process of developing this more is uh, in graphic design, there's an idea called kinetic typography. And it basically means uh, using animated words to relate a message or emotion or uh, something, you know, something more than just the text. And there's some guidelines out there from, from designers about like, if you're going to show words, think about it like this. And one of their rules of thumb is to provide enough time for people to read it one and a half times. Um, so everybody reads different. Uh, I think you probably err on the side of, of more time. Um, but that's yeah. my rule of thumb is, is kind of read it at a normal pace, let's say, or a, a kind of maybe slightly slower pace, but do it about one and a half times. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably a, an a, a opportunity to go too far where people are saying like, come on, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, there's a, there's always a balance there. Yeah. Coming from a broadcast TV background, I, I believe there is an actual standard that they use when they're, I mean, well, and now, nowadays, I don't think any of this applies. I'm talking like 35 years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when when there weren't that many graphics on the screen. Now you watch the news or whatever, and there's just like a thousand graphics and everything and things scrolling and whatnot. But back in the day when there was just one thing up on the screen at a time that they would kind of throw up there, there was a rule of thumb for our guy running the Chiron. Every time he pushed the button or the director yep. said, yeah, put this one up, you know, they, yep. they would count it out. I can't remember exactly how they did it, but there was a mm. standard for how long they would leave that stuff up. Yep. I, it's probably a similar thing to closed captioning, which has standards as well, because that's a, a similar, thing of of you know how long should it stay on the screen it's it's hard i imagine when people are talking quickly in a movie to try to absorb all all of that but um that's something i've thought about too mm -hmm. yeah i know you've got a uh, you've got a mini course that we were going to share with folks that they can sign up for to, to kind of learn how to do this but jeffrey's asking if you have examples uh, that we might be able to see we didn't really plan to yeah. show or share anything but i guess if oh, you've for got sure. something i guess we can yeah yeah i actually <laughs> uh, can we show a youtube video here how does that work uh absolutely you know what if you send me the link i can pop it in or you can just share your screen one way or the other sure depends on um, if you want to share your whole youtube screen yeah let me, let me just not. uh yeah, I can do this in just one second here. I, I, I looking back, I probably should have uh, had this on uh, on point. Yeah, that's all right. I thought we were just gonna. <laughs> I thought we were just gonna be chatting about this stuff too. But everybody is uh, very, very engaged and uh, excited to uh, to see what we're talking about. So yeah, we got um, time. Let's make it happen. Okay, so let's see. Viewing. Except for all of you listening on the podcast afterwards, <laughs> you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel and. Uh... <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. So I can chat to you directly, or should I just put it in the. Just put the, it in the regular the... chat so people have okay. it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then I'll right. just copy and paste it into my little window. And. So that's a little bit of an introduction for me as well. Um, but it's answering the question, what is a readable video? And um, it'll, it'll go through it a little bit there. And... I may have actually <laughs> oh, actually, shared you know, that, that link already. Actually, I'm realizing oh. that, that that specific <clears throat> video um, is, uh, is actually uh, just, me <laughs> just me talking, I believe. So. <laughs> oh, it doesn't like this one. It doesn't, it's not, let me see. It's not letting me pop it in there. Yeah. Um, oh, there it goes. All I had to do was erase a space. So, well, I, uh, well, I have a lot I, of example. Uh, yeah. No, I there it goes. I got, I got it okay. going. I finally okay. got it in there. I'm yeah. Leela no, Fever, no co founder of Common Craft, here to introduce readable videos. Now, I've been making animated videos at Common Craft for over 15 years, and I know the process very well. 
And so I know, I know think is that heard recording of voiceover, editing that voiceover, and then matching it up to animated visuals is a complicated and challenging process. It sometimes requires expensive tools, a lot of know-how. And I wanted to find a way to make that process easier, to make it easy to make a video oh, in a so couple of just hours or an afternoon. Yeah, and I, uh, that's really I'm where just saying, idea like, I'm of readable this videos is come from. My, uh, intro and what it means is that they're videos uh, more like that what we're don't talking have about. a voiceover. <laughs> and this free um, course, <laughs> examples of. Oops, yeah, you're just promoting your course. When yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm working on a. Uh, Let's see, I can share my screen and yeah, yeah. Um, do, let's see here. I've got, I've been, I'm working on the, uh, a version of the course that's like the more comprehensive course. So I'm really deep into it. And I think that's why I'm not. Uh, yeah, no uh, worries, man, no worries at all. Hang yeah. tight folks, this is, this is a relatively new concept and we are actually very really lucky <laughs> to have Leon talking about it before it's even fully yeah. made. Uh, okay, let me, course, uh, so. I, I'm happy to share my screen and, and walk through an example mm -hmm. from. Yeah, from, at the, bo at about the about bottom the of the screen down there, roll your mouse over, it says share something and then it'll tell you which, you'll ask you which screen you want to share. And All right, let me get back here. Yeah, let me turn off camera, share something. Okay, screen. Oh, here we go. All right. Are you guys seeing a PowerPoint slide? Yep, there it is. There it be. Okay, so I'm going to make this full screen here. Um, all right, you guys seeing this? Yep. Okay, so what we're going to do here is talk about a, sort of an intake form. So uh, this is kind of working through. These are the elements we're going to have, heading, subheading, body, shapes, callouts. And so let's say we have like an intake form, and we're thinking – um, you know, we have multiple sections here over on the right side is kind of where we're going to talk about things. So I like to divide up the screen so it's consistent for the viewer. On one side is where the graphics are. On the other side is the consistent place where the text is. I think when text is moving around everywhere, it can be uh, confusing. And so let's say in this example that we're going to practice with a couple of different, you know, animation styles here. So moving in, floating in. Uh, and then we kind of from the top and here we see one come from the top and then word shows up and then you can see here how the i like to think that the text is more engaging because as soon as the text appear, appears it starts to animate and i hope that gets people's attention a little bit more you can see how that works yeah, is that like working that. for you yeah yep. i see it yeah okay um I get I that's the that's the karaoke piece of the inspiration yeah. I take it yeah <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah it is and that's it. just using a uh, an effect an animation effect in PowerPoint so next thing you see how there's an entrance and exit effect there where something leaves and something else comes in um, we'll, I'll show you that one more time boom and then an arrow and then say please fill your your full name as it appears on your government ID I'm giving this a voiceover I should probably just let you read it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it's great. It's, it's very much like your common crap videos, except your hands not there sliding the paper cutout in. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So that's an example of, a, of an intake form. So it could also be. This is like Animal Crossing, if you guys know Animal Crossing. <laughs> Oops, I didn't let that go all the way through. The um, the visual of the of the typography changing color there is also giving you a sense of time. You know how much longer mm -hmm. you've got to read it in a sense too. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, instead of having like that little player bar thing running across the bottom or whatever. Yeah, got, yeah, like a, like a YouTube video. Um, and, and just so people know, I know you're too humble of a guy to be talking about this, but all those hand drawings that you um, have created, you sell in a artwork artwork pack on your website too for folks if you don't want to draw your own like we do drink and draw with kevin thorne and he's trying to teach our community how to draw their own <laughs> graphics like that but heck if you want to just go buy some great stick figure hand drawn type stuff 
Lee's website has a uh, has a great library that you can download. Oh, thank you, Brent. Um, yeah, we do. Uh, they're called Common Craft Cutouts. And what we realized it, yeah. was that when we were uh, making videos, we were creating lots of visuals for those videos and, and, and making them digitized and turning them into vectors. So they're really nice looking. And we thought, well, this is if we want to help people make videos, then maybe we can help them get over the visual pump a little bit and uh, give them uh, ready-made visuals that they can use in uh, in their projects. So that was kind of the genesis of that. Now there's over 3,200 of them in the library, I think. Um, okay, this is just a quick example of a, of a timeline kind of thing. Um, this is imagine maybe maybe teaching art history or, or something like that. Uh, some of this commentary is just me saying things it's not really <laughs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not an art historian but you can imagine a teacher maybe uh sending this um to to students and to kind of give them a a lesson that happens um in a video that's in a different format than them actually having to edit it uh so those are those are just three quick examples there um so uh, is that is that the kind of thing you're looking for? Yeah, I think that gives folks a, a good sense of, 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 of what you're of what you're doing with, with this project Great. for sure. Yeah, yeah and I, I did. Well, while you were chatting earlier, I popped a question into the chat and just asked folks if they were even aware of Common Craft or if they knew of the Common Craft videos. And there was a handful of folks that said this was they were they were brand new to it, brand new to you and um, and your work. And so. Um, and so I put commoncraft.com in the video for people to go take a look at your, uh, you know, your, your, your other work and whatnot with the explainer videos. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, thank you. You know, we've, we've been around for a long time and I think that our, our prime, our prime sort of attention was 2007 to 2012. <laughs> um, that's when sort of the videos were uh, very well known and, We've continued yeah. to uh, continue to make them, but I think that, that that buzz and that awareness just doesn't doesn't last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm th I'm so thankful to be able to talk to you guys and to be on here <laughs> and to be able to introduce what we do again. It's the um, it's the short term memory syndrome of of the modern internet and modern connected world, right? Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. And I think that we, you know, part of our story is that we got started on YouTube, but uh, once we needed to really figure out how to earn a living doing this. We were hired to make custom videos for companies, which was a, a good thing to do. Um, but we actually chose to stop using YouTube because uh, the only way you could really earn a living there is through advertising. And I think um, the advertising model is essential for a lot of things and it, and it works for a lot of people. But for the content we wanted to create, we really wanted to not have to consider the ad algorithm in order for us to make videos. I think it, it inevitably changes what content you make when you have to consider what's going to get the most views versus what's going to be most helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, so we made our, our website the home of our videos and stopped doing, using YouTube and then um, offered uh, viewing the videos with the watermark and then the option to download with membership. Yeah. Um it's so much of the algorithm, uh, you know, algorithm is so much of the story with so many things. I mean, and you can just see if you're in YouTube, you see the patterns of, of, of the people who are trying to use the, you know, that to make a living or to make some, some money. And, um, you know, that the, yeah. the standard, the standard screen of the person going, mm, you know, with, with the, you know, with the car, you know, the thumbnail, yeah. the, 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 but everything kind of looks the same. And then the, the same kind of language that gets used with all of the, um, uh, you know, with the title of it, you know, start trying to pose something as controversial rather than necessarily yeah. even helpful and Blow all of those kinds mind. of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't believe, you, you know, all of those things that are, you know, small, you know, manipula manipulations, et cetera, which also then change the tone, the tenor of, of mm -hmm. the practicality of what you're you know, explaining too. So for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I, always loved, I, I love the way you did that too by going to your own website and it gives you the ability to, to market it and make it available to educators. And, mm -hmm. you know, if people did want to buy a, a, a bundle of topics, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you've, you have so many topics out there now. And um, it's I would really love cool. to know too. Yeah. If, if anybody out there has any, um, ideas uh, <laughs> for for videos like we're we're you know getting we, we uh, took a break for a little while but we're looking to make more videos this year and I really hmm. we depend a lot on on the community uh, on people out there who are like this really needs an explanation um, so 
contact me. I'll, I'll share my contact information um, at the end of the chat. So please don't hesitate yeah. to be in touch. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You you had a great story when it when everything blew up in the early days with uh, <laughs> people showing up. Uh, was it was this? I'm not sure. I can't remember if this was your story or somebody else's. Uh, you when you guys finally got uh, seen and some bunch of black sedans rolled up in front of the house and all the businessmen come out and <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> sound familiar. <laughs> You or somebody else. Some, I somebody. would remember that, I think. Yeah, that must have been a different story that I was thinking of. But somebody that, that came to the same quick popularity because of YouTube or whatever yeah, yeah. was immediately asked to do the same thing for a large government agency. And oh, interesting. They, they, interesting. Were, they, were, they were shocked when, uh, when, the, uh, when the, all of the all of yeah. the stakeholders decided to show up for the meeting. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So no, that did, that was that wasn't us. But um, you know, again, we were not. We didn't really know what we were doing. We'd never run a creative agency. We'd never worked with customers on videos. But so we received an email that was kind of cryptic from just a Gmail address asking about custom videos. And this was like two months after that first video. And uh, Sachi did some sleuthing, and she's like, "I'm going to find out who this person is." And it turns out the person had spoken at a conference. Her name was on a conference list somewhere, but it was Google. And we ended up making our second custom video was explaining Google Docs um, hmm. the two, in 2007. So it was early version of, of Google Docs. You can find that yeah. on YouTube at, um, let's see, it's Google Docs in plain English is the hmm. video. It's been viewed millions of times now. But that was the closest I come to the black sedans is Google contacting us. <laughs> and we were like, we were like super excited, but also super anxious. Like, what are we gonna do with this? Like, how do we how do we work with Google? Um, yeah, and, 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 in that, and in that case, you're you're seeing Gmail and thinking that it's a cloaking, you know, or, or an anon yeah. anonymity. When really that's just their work email, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Funny. So there's a question in the chat that um, I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about. Yeah, jump in. You guys yeah, don't go mind. For it. So no, um, Edda Trav says, um, how do you compare readable videos to screencasts? So that's a good question. Um, screencasts, I guess, seems like um, something that can be a lot of different things. Um, I think of a screencast as recording something on a screen that you're doing, whether it's uh, doing a walkthrough of software or whatever it is. I think the key difference here is that in a, in mo in a lot of screencasts, I imagine, the uh, voiceover matters, like that you're 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 narrating something as something's happening, and totally valid, totally works. I do that all the time. Readable videos do not have a voiceover. There there is no audio unless you want there to be, um, and that could even be music. I think music is actually good because people are not used to seeing a video without sound. They think uh, mm -hmm. something's wrong. I need to click unmute or something. Um, so I actually advocate for having something in the background that gives people the sense that they are watching a video. But the goal is to remove the person's voice from the experience and allow them to view the video purely visually with words and symbols on the screen. Yeah, I think in, in general, people have started to get really used to that. I mean, that um, and you know, we maybe touched on it a little bit, but, you know, things like, you know, Instagram stories and TikTok mm -hmm. and Snapchat and all that kind of stuff, right? The trend to just put text on the screen because most people don't have their audio on when they're scrolling through all of that kind of stuff became really, you know, popular really fast. Absolutely. That was actually one of the inspirations that I meant to, uh, meant to bring up was like, that's me. If I'm looking at Instagram or whatever, I don't, I don't like it when my, 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 uh, phone makes sound, <laughs> you know, I like to keep it on mute most of the time. And if I can, if yeah. I see a video with subtitles, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll work with this. Um, so I think there's something here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do too. And I, I think there's just a lot of psychology behind it too. And of course, several people have mentioned, and you know, you mentioned too, you're, you're aware of the accessibility issues and, and mm -hmm. there's folks that mentioned like, um, the, the, the color changing on the text, um, you know, isn't, accessible and yeah you know it makes makes total sense and maybe it's a color issue too maybe it's a, a contrast issue there's a there's a lot of yeah. different things but in general i think just so everybody's you know aware i, I think it it goes without saying that that at least you know chris and i and at domino we put accessibility like mm -hmm. way at the top of a lot of the priorities around what we want 
you know, folks to be doing and to help people build more accessible learning content. And I know Lee, you're aware of it and, and, and all of the stuff that you do. So I don't, I don't want people to think that you're going about this. This is just another tool that we can have in our toolbox. I don't, I don't want people to think that you haven't thought this through. <laughs> yeah. You know, I really appreciate that. We learned this lesson very early with common craft. Again, we came through making videos without any experience and accessibility was something that quickly came up. Uh, and we started making videos with uh, subtitles with uh, open captions um, because we work with a lot of members of common craft our government agencies and things that are required to have accessible media yeah. and um, I think it is really important and honestly um, I didn't immediately think of the visually impaired with readable videos but as soon as we started talking about it someone wrote and said hey you should be aware of this and I thought oh gosh I'm so glad that you mentioned that um, I don't know that there's anything that I can do in terms of the, the core idea of readable videos, because it is a visual thing, but I did want to be make other people aware that it's an issue and to also say that there are no rules that if you're making a video that needs to be more accessible, you can always add a voiceover or media. Um, but yeah, the, the core, the core idea, unfortunately, is inherently inaccessible. And in, so. in, in a lot of context of what you're doing, um, you know, um, the text of what's on screen could also be included as a transcript, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, that could be accessed, accessed that way. So, yeah. yeah, audio descriptions, I think, are something that that um, that is that's possible, maybe. Yeah. Yep. We did. Um, we did have one question in the actual question panel. I've seen this oh. for the first time in our new version there. <laughs> they, and you mentioned it, but maybe we can get a little bit more specific. How do you do the animated text, uh, the color changing in PowerPoint? Uh, it's yes. just a setting, right? Or an, an animation? It is. Um, it's called the brush effect. Um, so if you go into the animation tools in PowerPoint, I should say too, I'm using PowerPoint for Mac, the most updated version. So in case that matters, but I think this is pretty standard. If you go to animation, if you highlight a text box, go to animation and go to effects, there's something called the brush effect. And that's, that's what does that kind of moving, uh, you know, Probably allows you to set the color that text. you want and all that kind it of does. Right there. It does. It does. And I, 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 this is helping me too because I'm thinking like that red. I just happened to choose it. I wasn't actually thinking about the accessibility of that specifically, but maybe um, I will change that color in future versions. Uh, I'll, I'll just need to look into that. Um, what will be the most accessible way to yeah. do that? Yeah. You know, and for and for those folks in the chat, you know, since we're talking so much about accessibility, last week's episode of Idiotic, we had a conversation about accessibility and the Trusted Tester uh, program, a place where you can go take mm -hmm. a course for free and actually get certified on being a trusted tester of accessibility. And oh, whatnot. interesting. Yeah, so uh, you can check that out to learn more about it. And then uh, in a in a couple more weeks, we're going to be having uh, another one of our guests from a past episode um, also talk about accessibility. So it's a big topic. It's important. It's a very broad topic too. And it, it requires a lot of thought. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, I see Dr. Rose mentioned that underline might be more accessible. That's a really great point. I'm so glad yeah. you brought that up. Um, and then uh, Bob says, what do you suggest for si size for font? Uh, that's a really good question. I don't really have uh, any rules or, or guidelines developed for that. I think that readability is is obviously the thing like it's got it has to be readable so um <clears throat> there are some of those kinetic type of typography guidelines uh in the course that i'm working on that just you know gives you uh font selections that are not often stylized or even yeah. have serifs they're just very plain um you know clear fonts are are a big deal and then uh depending on what else is happening on the page and how people are going to be using the video i like to look at, at at readable videos on a phone to see like can you read this on the phone and if not then maybe the the, the font needs to be a little bigger yeah need to adjust yeah i think standard design practices would apply uh in mm -hmm. cases uh yeah. like this as well but uh boy we've reached that time in our fantastic little show here on Wednesday mornings. Please thank you. To this too. As the music slowly starts to roll in, we'll start to tell everybody <laughs> about uh, all of the things. So, Lee, thanks so yeah. much for joining us this week. Um, toss your contact info into the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing this in here now. Forgive me if there's any uh, any typos. I'm just reviewing yeah. it now after I've put it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Awesome. Very cool. Well, this has been really fun, guys. I really, uh, I really appreciate connecting, and the chat has been, been great. And uh, I've learned, like I've learned from you guys, and that, that's mm-hmm. really awesome. Yeah, we have such great folks that join us for for each of our sessions. Great conversation in the chat. So thanks to everybody who's joined us there this week, folks. Da- Domino One authoring tool of choice for those of us uh, who hang out at Idiotic. Well, we like to think so anyway. Sponsors of, of our session here today, so if that's of interest, I've dropped the link into the chat there for you to check that out. Um, we do this every week as Wednesday, at Wednesdays. We've got a couple great sessions coming up, so don't forget to sign up for those before you leave the Crowdcast session here today. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, Lee. Thank you. Just go ahead and Folks, thanks for hanging out with us, as always. Have a good day.